What a beautiful space. Thanks so much for opening your garden gate for us. And it just proves that gardens in Texas have varied cultural roots. And I'm here today with uh, William Welch, uh, who is the author of Heirloom Gardens in the South. Uh, and we're going to be exploring the Spanish uh, cultural roots of so many Texas gardens. It's always great to have you on the program, Bill. Thanks, Tom. It's always great to be here. And this is a, a very exciting topic, I think, to uh, reflect upon because there's so many ways it's part of our past and so many ways that it can be part of our present and future. Right, right. Well, of course, the first Europeans in Texas were the Spanish. The first yes. uh, towns in Texas were uh, San Antonio and towns of that sort, uh, all, all built with the classic Mexican plazas, et cetera, and Absolutely. that town planning filtered down into the homes, didn't it? Absolutely, it did, and the, the patio homes and the mm -hmm. the overhead structures for shade and mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, uh, the general things that were part of the Spanish architecture uh, became ours. Well, and there, there were, there's a certain wisdom, too, that the Spanish brought with them because they came from a, a like climate. They do. Coming from a, a relatively hot, dry uh, climate, it, uh, it fits so, so, well, uh, uh, mm -hmm. so well here. And, uh, uh, and, and the, particularly the out making shade, you know, with, right. uh, with the, uh, uh, with the, with grape vines, and you know, we might make a little wine while we're uh, enjoying the shade. But, sure. uh, but anyway, uh, uh, so many of these things uh, fit in different ways. Well, you know, when I think of Spanish gardens, I, I go back to even pre-Spanish uh, uh, civilizations. I think of the Moorish civilization yes. in southern yes. Spain and Granada, yes. and of course, um, one of the world's uh, classical uh, garden spaces is the Alhambra in yes. Granada, yes. Yeah. and. Uh, Incredible use of a minimal amount of water, really. Absolutely, they were they were geniuses at it, and uh, they would take a small rill of water and move it through a property, and the sound of it, uh, the sight of it, uh, you know, cooled uh, mm. cooled everything uh, there, and uh, uh, it just didn't take a lot of water to uh, to make a big effect mm -hmm. in these gardens. And, and you mentioned the shading, and that would come in, you know, a lot of these were courtyard-like spaces. Yes, walled. And, the, mm -hmm. and all the periphery would typically have, like, cloister-like coverings. Yes, yes. And uh, so you could would. you could kind of navigate around the garden or th be in close contact with the garden, but be sheltered from the brutal heat. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It just, uh, it worked beautifully in this, uh, in this climate. And uh, it's... In, you know, we see lots of examples of it uh, in, in today's uh, homes and gardens, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, uh, it's really great when we see a really good example of it to be inspired yeah. even further. There's, and to, I don't know, no, it's, for me, it's, there's something special and magical about a walled space, a, a walled yes. garden. Yes. Yeah. There's kind so of it's, that it's very intimate. Yeah. Intimate, and there's always, as, you know, if you go travel in Mexico or, or places in Europe yes. uh, that have yes. the Mediterranean climate, you, you walk down the streets lined with walls and these yes. beautiful yes. gates, and yes. you always wonder, what's on the other side yes. of those gates? Yes. <laughs> you yes. might hear a little water, you might <laughs> smell a rose, Indeed. but you, you, Indeed. it's all mystery. Yeah, fragrance was another big thing about the uh, Spanish. They loved mm -hmm. fragrant, uh, fragrant plants, mm -hmm. and uh, so often used uh, 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 various jasmines and gardenias and things mm -hmm. like that to, to help, uh, help add the fragrance to the garden. Well, a lot of uh, the plants that are red hot right now in terms of Texas gardening have a kind of Spanish roots as well, too. I'm thinking of citrus, for example. Oh, yes, citrus. The Spanish brought us citrus. They brought us figs. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, these pomegranates, they mm -hmm. brought us pomegranates. We're all, t all plants we're turning back to now. Absolutely. They, they fit into the climate. They're, mm -hmm. they're beautiful. And in many cases, they're, you know, mm -hmm. certainly in those three, they're, right. they're edible things for our gardens right. that we can, sustainable edible plants mm -hmm. that not only work for us, but they don't require, an, uh, you know, a, a great deal of right. uh, water or management. You know, when I think of the Spanish garden, we've talked about fragrance, we've talked about uh, a little bit about the use of water. Color is always a, uh, something I think of as well. Sometimes really bold, striking really bold, colors. Really bold, striking colors are, are very much part of it. And also, uh, a flamboyance with uh, with design and bringing tile mm -hmm. into into them, and quite often colorful tiles, mm -hmm. in in uh, into the uh, into the garden is a good thing. But certainly, we think of bougainvilleas in a mm -hmm. in a garden. Uh, sure. one of the more typical type things that we utilize. That's uh, typically a, a colorful uh, a Hispanic uh, paste. Right. Well, you mentioned tile, and that the you know the, I think of the beautiful colors that come with that, and and now. I think uh, of the the wild popularity of, of the glazed pottery, for example. Yes, yes. And while much of it is coming from Asia, 
um, the color palettes that we're buying and what we're seeing in our gardens feel very Spanish. They do. They really do. I mm. think we can say that they're rooted in, <laughs> yeah. in, that, uh, right. uh, in that culture. Right. Uh, which, and uh, people have, have certainly embraced that use of bold color and forms and indeed, things. Like, yeah. Indeed. It's a, it's a, a great thing to, uh, uh, to add. And we can do it in containers, and certainly mm -hmm. container gardening uh, is, a, is another concept that comes to us. And also the whole idea of roof gardens. The mm -hmm. Spanish invented roof gardens, uh, unless maybe the Romans did. But at any rate, there was a little borrowing going on. There. Well, it, borrowing is, it has been going on for a long time. <laughs> I think the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, yes. you know. <laughs> but I, I remember one in particular in Mexico City, the garden center for the garden clubs there had a roof garden on it and, uh, and really nice uh, low water use container plants. Mm -hmm. And we've got all of these things of Mexican origin, some of these sedums and oh, yeah. uh, you know succulents that do so well for us here. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we sometimes get overly emphasized with some of the stuff from other parts of the world when really some of these things from Mexico are probably better for us. Sure. And, uh, uh, but anyway, they're, uh, uh, they, they can really make a contribution while not uh, robbing us of our precious moisture. Right, right. And, I, you know, the, 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 co the collections of, of pottery that you see yes, and, yes. And, the fo and the bold uh, structural plants in the containers often really add up to something really special. I've, I've always loved container gardening. Well, container gardening is a great thing. I get, you know, at this time of year, if we've got things that have to be watered every day, mm -hmm. it's not quite as uh, wonderful. But if we're, <laughs> right. if we're careful about what we choose and right. select some of these things uh, that uh, that are low water use, they right. can, I have things that I I don't have to water at all, you know, and they look really, really good. Of yeah. course, I have others that do. Yeah. But <laughs> no, right, right. Well, I find even um, some of my super xeric plants uh, in the Texas sun sitting out in a yes. pot, they, uh, a drink a day is often good, but, uh, you know, it's it's a part of the routine, yes. and it's an easy thing to do, and as long as you don't get too carried away with yeah. it. And there yeah. are ways to kind of help yourself with it, putting saucers under the collector right. water, etc. Saucers et are a, a great innovation. They're, mm -hmm. They... Uh, uh, they allow the water to be recycled into the plant, and, mm -hmm. and, and we can get by with, with less if we do right. that. Well, you know, it, it, as, as Texas matures and deals with its climate and yes. thinks about yeah. gardening in a more responsible way than yes. perhaps we did a generation or two ago, um, looking back to our roots uh, on the Spanish side, I think adds lots of inspiration, both on the design front and also just on the practicality side. Absolutely, it does. And you know, it's it's really fun to go through uh, some of the smaller communities in Texas. I always enjoy driving through, and you'll see a uh, uh, the use of I, I know one not too far from here, and it's a very modest little house, but beautiful container plants. Mm -hmm. You know, and they've just taken some ordinary containers and painted them bright blue, mm -hmm. and the whole effect is uh, uh, is just really uh, very very nice. Right, and. I think there's something about the, the, the spaces that reflect uh, uh, another aspect of, of Spanish culture, Mediterranean culture, European culture, and that is the communal activity. Yes. Uh -huh. the, uh, th these are designed on a human scale they often and, and as intimate spaces to mm -hmm. gather, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, very uh, family focused. That's in the courtyards, of course, throughout the ancient world and into you know Spain and beyond were really the places, uh, the private outdoor spaces of families, yes. you know. living space. Yeah, yes. as an additional living space. Absolutely, absolutely, they, uh, uh, they are. And uh, they uh, uh, are ways we can have less square footage. And of course, you know, if we moderate the climate in there with the walls and the, mm -hmm. and the shading, and, and so forth. A little hint of water. A little, a little water, a little water helps. Fountain or yes, grill. Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's, I think there's some really beautiful examples, and there, there are examples all over Texas, but I know mm -hmm. uh, San Antonio in particular has, a, has some really wonderful examples of sure. these kind of homes and gardens. One of my, you know, and places that people, the public can go to, and one of my favorite places in all of Texas is at the Spanish Governor's Mansion. Yes, yes. Step back, um, yes. Just the back patio and that yeah. little fountain yeah. Yeah. Uh, covered with maidenhair fern. And, yes, uh, yes. Uh, it's a lovely space and deeply fragrant plants, a giant sweet olive growing back there. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's a, and you know, the citrus again, citrus mm -hmm. is m really making a comeback in mm -hmm. gardens in Texas and uh, uh, some of them are, and we're doing some work uh, mm -hmm. with some of the more cold hardy citrus now and the uh, uh, satsumas, kumquats right. and some of their derivatives are really, uh, uh, they got the fragrant uh, uh, 
blooms and, mm -hmm. the, and the edible fruit. Yeah, well, again, a tempting reminder of our Spanish roots. Absolutely. Bill, as always, uh, I could sit and visit with you for a long time about any of these topics, but it's uh, great to have you back on the program. Again, uh, William Welch, uh, Heirloom Gardening in the South, thank you so much for being a, a part of our program. It's my pleasure, Tom. Okay. Always great to be here. Okay, coming up next is our friend Daphne.